to the Grand Land video blog for books that came out on June 9th, 2010. As always, I'm Craig, your host. I believe, if I'm counting still correctly, this is issue number 199 of the video blog. Very exciting. I'm not sure what we're going to do for next week, but I've got a couple ideas in mind. Hopefully, we'll have a big 200. If not, uh, I apologize. we got nine books to talk about this week, so we better just get it right into it. No more fancy hoodoo. Let's start with Astonishing X-Men Exogenesis. As much as I don't like the idea of the astonishing line being, you know, uh, a line and being marketed as such, it's Warren Ellis writing the X-Men. And obviously, Warren Ellis knows how to write the X-Men because this book is still amazing, just like I said in issue one. Really fun. Uh, it turns out, or, or at least it looks like, it's going to be Ghost Box related, which obviously is uh, a matter of expertise for Mr. Ellis since he told the Ghost Box's story in Astonishing that's still kind of not quite done or uh, no I think ghost boxes is done whatever the next one is we're still waiting on it it's like so mega delayed which is disappointing again just like with issue one the only bad thing I have to say about this is care Andrews art is awful this does not just doesn't pay off the art is bad it's lumpy it's crazy it's it's Frank Quitely's worst day with a broken wrist um, but the story more than makes up for it. The, the way Warren Ellis writes the X-Men, the characterization is just spot on and it's fantastic to read. Very, very fun. DC gives us Batman 700, the giant sized anniversary issue. Let me tell you right now, uh, giant sized, uh, we're taking a little liberty with that, okay? We're gonna charge you $5 apparently for 31 pages. Uh, Grant Morrison all, you know, writes all 31 pages. They can't find an artist that can draw more than, say, eight. Uh, so they get four of them. Tony Daniel, David Finch, Andy Kubert, Frank Quitely. And then Quitely can't even finish, and then somebody else finishes his. And I completely forgot who it is, and I apologize to that artist, because, you know, he deserves a little credit. So anyways, here's a 31-page story about Batman. It's a good story, don't get me wrong. It's uh, very accessible in terms of Grant Morrison. It's very almost done in one, but at the same time, it kind of refers back to other things that have been going on with Morrison's run. But is it $4.99? I don't know. I think there's a big debate right now amongst the anniversary issues because we just had Amazing Spider-Man 600 not that long ago, which was like 66 pages of John Romita Jr for five dollars plus backup stories you know 100 page package this is 31 pages of story and then we tack on a bunch of pinups that basically look like uh covers that they were going to use and they just ran out of space to use them and and a 3d map of the bat cave that's really un like i'm sure that's like the hundredth time somebody's drawn the bat cave you know in a multi-page spread and go here's where it all is we don't need that it's really a 4.99 uh almost regular length comic book in terms of its uh, writing style. But it's a fun done in one by Grant Morrison, and it has that going for it. Chew's third arc starts with number 11, Just Desserts. And let me tell you, these guys know how to write a story arc. They know how to start a story arc. They know how to finish a story arc. It's becoming obvious. This is the third arc of the series. Trade Paperback Volume 2 comes out next Wednesday, so pick it up if you haven't already read it. Trade Paperback Volume 1 is still around. It's like $10. I think number 2 is a little higher. I think it might be $12. i am not sure. But still, fantastic book if you're not already reading this. Tony Chu is a fantastic character. Very interesting. If you've ever watched Lost, I just see uh, the guy who played Miles from Lost being Tony Chu in in the Chew movie. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But still, very good, Just Dessert starts, it's five-part, like all their arcs are, and it's good jumping on point. There's a lot of recap, it covers what it is, and it's perfect snapshot of what makes this book good. Some crazy characterization, some fun insanity that happens, wild stuff, but really, really good. Funny and kind of interesting at the same time, which is really where that book pays off. Iron Man Noir number three, Scott Snyder continues to take us on this really cool, uh, almost like pulpy uh, adventure with Tony Stark. And it's still just awesome. And there's a great twist here at the end, uh, and I'm not gonna give it away, but this was probably the most unexpected ending to a noir book since uh, like Daredevil number two when the Bullseye Killer was revealed, Daredevil noir number two. Uh, really cool twist. I'm very excited to see where the final chapter goes. Just oh my gosh, it's, it's pulp, but it's Iron Man at the same time. It's, it's great. It's so good. You, you need to be reading this book. If, if you've been giving up on the second tier noir stuff, this goes back to first tier. This is really, really good, exciting stuff. Justice League Generation Lost, number three. And Winnick 
has matched Giffen and, and is uh, Winnick and Giffen have really hit their stride. They're doing exactly what they need to do with this book. And I think it can go one of two directions. They can either have a very good explanation as to why uh, they're revisiting the set pieces from the JLI, or they can just ignore it entirely. One way or the other, you know, one is going to be really interesting, and the other one is going to be mediocre. You know, if, if they have a bad description or a contrived uh, description as to why we get there, it's going to be kind of sad. But if they just leave it alone, we're fine with it. You know, it's still a very fun story along the way. Hopefully they have a good explanation, a good vi vision for this book, and hopefully it's correct explanation and it's a good one and it will pay off and we'll, we'll feel a lot better about this book. Mark Millar gives us Nemesis. Oh, I suppose McNevin does too. Um, Nemesis number two. Crime is awesome and so am I. This is still really fun. It's only four issues. Yes, it's you know running not quite monthly. It's Millar. It doesn't run monthly. It's Icon. You know, it it ties into that whole kick-ass idea, but it's a really cool story and it's still sticking very strongly to that pitch. What if Batman was a bad guy and there are no superheroes? You know, what if what if Batman has a ton of money, builds all these cool things, is really really smart, and just screws with the police? It's really cool, but at the same time, it gets a really nice explanation as to why Nemesis is doing what he's doing in this issue. And again, I get to the end and I go, man, I can't wait for the next issue. So still be reading it. I know there's a Molar hype machine out there, and I know that you can pretty much just drown it all out as white noise, but still, good stuff. Better than Kick-Ass. Easily better than Kick-Ass. Secret Six, number 22, and the Catman story wraps up, and Gail Simone is twisted. Oh, man good wrap up but at the same time i'm really left wondering where the book is going to go I, you know going forward i have no idea what we're going to do if this is a good jumping on point or if it's a good jumping off point the the team kind of seems in shambles uh catman has finished his little personal story and it's it's good don't get me wrong but it ends and it ends almost like the book is ending and i know the book's not ending because i've seen solicits but it just makes me wonder where we're going next off of this so it's a good breather point, you know, gets a crazy end, and there it is. And it's always good, as, as Blue Goblin will tell you now that he reads it because I told him to. Shield number two, and again, speaking of books that are worth the wait, John Hickman, baby. Woo! He gets a full page text piece, he gets into his crazy little art design. Oh man, such good stuff. If you read Nightly News, this book is just going, hey, remember awesome John Hickman? Yes. Uh, the descriptions just like, or the, or the complaints that come from his Marvel work, specifically his stuff already on Secret Warriors and uh, Fantastic Four, he knows where he's going and screw you, he's going to take his time to get there. And that's the same way in S.H.I.E.L.D., but there's some really interesting ideas being put forth here to kind of deal with what's going on. So, very cool. Leonardo da Vinci is probably the best protagonist, the, the unexpected character find of 2010, is that what we're going to call him? I don't know. But good, great stuff. Uh, still very cool. Not a lot of like set piece fanboy stuff where, where you know, oh look, here's Apocalypse and an ancient Moon Knight fighting off the Brood in ancient Egypt. We're getting down into what what is going on and why this is going on with Leonardo da Vinci flying around with some crazy contraptions. Very fun, but at the same time very logical. And lastly, I'd be remiss to mention this. I know I haven't opened it yet, but I flipped through it and oh, Joshua Hale Fialkov and Noel Toison, and I hope I didn't kill either of their names have come to us with the original graphic novel, Tumor. And look at, look at that, it's like a book. It is a book. It's got a dust cover. It's so good. It's $15 in its pulp noir detective storytelling. Fialkov, if you're not familiar with his work, is a fantastic writer. Uh, he just friended me on Twitter, thanks. Thanks, uh, that's, that was pretty cool. Um, but this is fun. If you ever read Elk, Elk's Run, and I'm sure you've heard me talk about it at length on the video blog, Elk's Run is a fantastic book this is going to be great too. From what little I've seen of it, it's going to be really fun. I'll have a more in-depth review next week once I actually dive into this. That's it for this installment. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next week.